to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. Welcome to Cash Daddies, where we're banking fatties. And let me tell you, it's been a week of just stacking fatties, okay? Uh, Join me as always is the dynamic duo, the Ass to Ass Brothers, Chris Neff and Howie Dewey. How are you, boys? We're great. Good. Not as good as you. Prepare. Prepare to get your dick sucked, buddy, because you hit it. And then uh, on the ones... Bitcoin Sammy. Uh, And then on ones and two, Evan Hand. Evan, how are you? Fantastic. How are you guys? Uh, I'd be better if I knew why you're rocking the Bruce Springsteen. What are you born in the USA? What is going on, Lil? That's my thing, man. That's my thing, the bandana. I think you just got a bad haircut and you're trying to fucking cover that shit up. I just got a fresh fade. What are you talking about? Look at that. That's a good haircut, dude. That's a good haircut. My barber, my barber is undefeated. Yeah, it's a good barber. It's a good look. It's a good look, bro. You're gonna get a ton of ass with that. And we're going to try to make you, you're, so, you're almost looking Vato there a little bit, right? Hey, hey guys. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, word on the street is, and the streets are talking, Cash Daddy t-shirts are flying off the shelves. People are loving them. If you want to support the show, please go to CashDaddiesT-shirts.com. That is CashDaddiesT-shirts.com. And there you go, man. Uh, we got some more coming. So uh, please, it's a great way to support the show and help us and help Evan move out from his mom's basement. So let's make this happen. He is a Make-A-Wish kid. Guys, how are you? One more thing. Awesome. One more thing. We're doing a t-shirt giveaway on Instagram and Twitter. So it's going to be one to one person on each platform. Um, so just go to our Twitter, retweet it, favorite it, or go to our Instagram, uh, repost, like, and comment. By the way, I did notice that there were some um, some re- reader that did not follow the request. You have to retweet and like. And I think the correlation was 129 retweets and 121 likes. So that means eight of you are not reading correctly. So to be you're eligible. Readers. You're fucking yeah. readers. Yeah, you're to readers. Be eligible, you have to do both. And one question, uh, Lily, when does this contest end? We're going to be picking them live on, well, we're going to be doing it Wednesday, but you guys will, our readers will find out on Thursday morning. We'll be doing it live on the podcast. Okay. And just so I know, because I already have a few people saying, is this going to be rigged because I don't trust you guys. I'll share my screen. No, no, no. They want, they want the, um, the ping pong balls or the little thing that the, the old ladies use at the bingo hall. They want to see their names come out of it. So are you uh, that would be bingo wings. That's what they use in the bingo hall to yeah. to pick the 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 mark their card. So we will get a couple bingo wings rocking in here for you people. By the way, something's going on with those arms. Have you been in the gym? Yeah. Hey, brother, doing push-ups every day, trying to get my Evan hand on. Okay, that's okay. what I'm trying to do. Get my Evan hand on. That's right. So the point is, readers, do not worry. Uh, the contest will be audited by Price Waterhouse Cooper. We are on the level. That is Neff's drug dealer. Okay. So, real quick, guys. Um, also, I'm going to be live. We're going to be doing some live shows, hopefully, uh, soon. It's either going to have to be on the East Coast or West Coast, but we'll be doing some Cash Daddies live. You guys have demanded it. So, hopefully, Someday we'll be able to do it, but I'm doing stand up live. Uh, I will be in Kansas City this weekend. I'll be at the comedy club in Kansas City Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week. I believe, uh, let me see what the dates on that are. Ba-ba-ba-ba. They see, yeah, dude, I love it. I'm going back. Dude, got to write a whole bunch of new shit, really laying into it, man. So I'm going to be there 18th, 19th, and 20th. Uh, this and then the following week. On the 27th, for the first time in my life, I have added a second show because the first show sold out. Makes me feel good. 
nipples getting hard. I will be in Lombard. You can get all of these uh, dates on my website, samtriplee.com. Anybody got some shows coming up? Yeah, nothing. First week of April. Um, when that, That's coming up. Uh, that is coming up. Will you is. be doing any dates on that time, or is that just a, a weekend to look right forward to? Right here in New York City, baby. Like three different places. I'm not even sure yet. The clubs are like... You guys opened, right? Yeah, April 2nd, 35%. Um, it's going to be interesting. Very interesting. Uh, uh, they think that's going to be happening uh, in in uh, L.A. too. Oh, you know, yeah. On the no. street, they're gearing up to start opening these comedy clubs in early April. Yeah, nothing uh, confirmed for sure yet, though. Nothing. Come on. Thank you, Debbie Downer. Jesus, could you say that's sadder? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then I, I'm final. My last day is I'm going to be in Austin, uh, April 9th and 10th at the Romo Room. So, again, at samtriplee.com. So, check that out. Check that out. Check that out. Right. Guys, uh, let's get to it. My pants are down. My underwear's off. My balls are shaving. Work them nuts. Okay. Give them a good neff go. or neff the shit out of them, Chrissy boy. Yeah, well, okay. that's what we're gonna call that for now. Neff the shit out of my nuts. Please. I will give Neffing. credit. I will give credit where credit is due. You blew up. Uh, I feel like this is good, fellas, and we're in that scene where we're gonna make you. Um, you finally have proven your worth as a soldier out on the streets. Took you a little while, but you've arrived. So prepare to get made. Uh, we're gonna put the the card in your hand and burn the saint, and then yes. uh, you are one of us. This thing of ours, and um, a, what can I say? Mana exploded, and yeah. you made a lot of people a lot of money out there, man. Yeah. So I will admit, um, I needed to see you do something before I would do anything. But you have my <laughs> respect, and I did jump in on the mana wagon. I woke up yesterday. People were like, "Bye, bye, bye, bye," and I was like, "Am I too late?" And they were like, "No." And how he's like. Wait till it goes to 50 cents. <laughs> then you buy. And I was like, nope. I bought it at 117. I bought it at 112. It's, it's at 108. Hey, how no, but that's okay, Howie. It's we like you do, you don't get this game that we're playing right now. This thing, it, trust <laughs> me, even if it went down to a, a, a nickel, it's still gonna go up. It has practical terms. I know, but I'd rather buy it at a nickel and sell it at a dollar. Why? Okay, you could buy it a nickel, but you see, that's how that's fine. Howie. Readers Howie. can do whatever they want. If you want to pump and dump it, do it. I'm gonna I'm buy fine. some. I'm gonna buy some. Now, listen, man. I'm gonna tell you guys something again. You know, and we have a real fun discussion on this. Today. Looking at it right here, man. But these are not pump and dumps. These are hold on to them for a long time. Okay, that's all I'm saying, dude. Get these tech coins that have practical, practical uses, okay? And hold them year, two year, three years, four years, okay? I'm telling you, man, if you listen to me right now, you could be changing, in my humble opinion. And, you know, who knows what could happen? Who knows a, a meteor could hit the planet and it all goes away. But for me, man, you're going to change your family's fucking Yeah, wealth. but... Our boy just said just to buy Bitcoin. He said, "Don't what, fuck what, with what, what boy? The guy Are that we just into the future. Are you, going Are you to talking about what's right going to happen in the future right now? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ! Come on, Howie. Oh, Jesus, Howie, Howie. Howie, Howie, you Howie. just broke the illusion for the readers. Howie. Right? Jesus. What are you? Are you telling everybody how we do our magic tricks? You're like, dude, he's not really cut in half. His body's actually in a different place. We didn't actually cut him in half. God damn it, Howie. God Good damn it, dude. Lord. This guy does this, not understand people, time travel. Our okay? readers are not going to trust us now, man. <laughs> what oh, did you do? Man. Very sensitive to the readers. God damn. He, I know, he, Howie, as much as my balls are getting worked right now, you took somewhat of a beating. I, I Now, is my $2,000... <laughs> being flown to me right now mailed to me are you gonna send it paypal what are you doing since you told oh, me to you're sell talking my about gme, GME. Yeah, yeah you told yeah. me to sell well where would you sell it that's that listen i hate that fucking stock because you don't know what it's gonna do it's up it's down 
Um, you know I'm going to tell you what it's going to do right now. I'm telling you, you guys have to start looking at meme stocks the way you look at Dogecoin, okay? It's like it is going to be a bump and dump, and it's never going to stop doing hey, that. Hey, hey, we've been over this. Bump and dump is what you do at the glory holes. It's pump and dump. Fucking oh. pump and dump. <laughs> He's a damn. pump and dumper. <laughs> <laughs> you keep that bump, bump and, and dump. dumping on your own time, man. They're running a hump and dump scheme, man. It's a hump and dump scheme. <laughs> they're, they're running oh. in, they're banging, they're they're pounding, and they're leaving. Pump, they're ass pounding, and getting the hell out and, quickly. And, and dump. That's what this is. You gotta stop looking at different than these other stocks. This will always go up and down. And now your key is buy low, sell high, and just keep it. That's all it's gonna do. Meme stocks are a whole new game. Hey, so are you back in GameStop? Because I am not. I'm waiting for it to dip. Okay. It will. All right. And then Howie, are you gonna get back in and make some money with me? Because I am joining Reader Nation on GameStop. You, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. And, I'm gonna, and I'll show you when I do it. Here's Why is everybody so angry? I'm not angry. I'm excited. I'm pumped up. We're going to have a good week because there's a <laughs> no, lot of shit that's going to go up angry, this angry, dude? Has this well, been an angry show? I feel great. Yeah, I was talking. I, awesome. I was referencing the future that Howie just brought up when it got angry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I had a little mind. Uh, okay. Um, but no, GME, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. And I told I, on the discord, I said this, I think this stock is probably going to go higher. I think it could go to three, three fifty, whatever. I'm telling you right now, I'll show you, I'm going to buy puts on it. Yes, I am. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to short it, but I am going to buy puts on it. Okay. And I am be, going to make money that, and I'll show you. They okay, better be so, leaps, bro. They better be like a year out. Hell no. Hell okay, no. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So this is a part of the show where we talk about what we're going to do, right? I, I, I Please do not stop working my nuts, okay? This okay. is the work the nuts section of the I show. I can multitask. I'm under the table right now doing this, and I'm up here talking about GME, all right? <laughs> Give us a little credit. We can do two things at the same time. Tickle Working. those balls and nuts here. <laughs> GME up here. Nuts, GME. Right. Nuts, GME. We got it. We got it. Howie, tell <sighs> us your thesis about why you're putting puts on GameStop. I'm telling you, what I'm going to do is this. Uh, when this thing jumps 20, 25, 30% in a day, which I think it will, I'll probably go 10, 15 points below it. And no, I'll probably go out two, three weeks. Um, because this thing is very volatile and I'm sorry, man. I mean, I know what's going up. I, I see that, uh, it's a fucking $20 stock and that's the bottom line. Okay. Now here's the thing. I love you and I believe, believe in you. My concern is if you're going to play with lighten the loafers delights on this or even yeah. monthlies, I think you're playing with fire. Because we have stimulus money entering the market. We have people that are, are late to the party and want to be a part of history. And I think they're going to just keep buying this. And let's not let forget me, the short let me interest. Stop you with the stimulus philosophy, the stimulus bullshit philosophy, which I will. You can't tell me that this fucking $1,400 stimulus is going to boost this market. There's just people got people that are getting this $1,400. They're not millionaires, man. They're people that are making what eighty thousand or, le or less a year. Yeah, uh, don't judge our readers, bro. They're also people with a dollar and a dream. That's why the lottery exists, man. Yeah, but you know you. that the lottery is a tax on the Thank poor. Thank you. Well, look yeah, at but, but Thank that's you. fine. But my point is this. My point is, it, this isn't going to make the market go through the roof, man. This is. I'm what? not talking about the market. I'm talking about GameStop. I don't think, look, Jesus, the last people in the world that should be buying GameStop or somebody that's getting a fucking stimulus check. Yeah, and that's why they will buy it because they uh, are. I don't think so. Too. I think people got bills that they're going to pay first. Uh, I don't I don't think that it's the small guy that's making this shit go up now. I don't think so. Yeah, I let's, think it's let's big, bring that up. You think it's the Russians, apparently. I, Russians, Chinese, uh, private uh, wealth management, uh, hedge funds, small conglomerates of money. Yes, I do. I think it's institutions that are buying the shit out of this. There's definitely been more block trades. 
uh, on, on, so, on some of these GME boosts. Did you say black trades? No, block he didn't. Trade. He said blocks. Block. Don't try. Don't try and make this something it's not. Okay, uh, uh, that's another show you did. <laughs> Basically, a big chunk, a big chunk of money going I'm in. Trying to get this show by, canceled. So yeah, I have my time. Do. <laughs> do a good job, man. Um, <laughs> yes, going in. No, so I think it's big money coming in, pushing this thing up. I don't think it's Reddit. I don't because look, Chris. The short interest on this fucking stock is literally dropping. I think it's like 19, 20% right now. You got you got little E stock, yeah. OCGN. That shit's like 40%. They should be buying the shit out of that one, not 52. GME. GameStop on, is uh, 21%. 21%. And when they first, when, when these guys on Reddit first started shorting this shit, Chris, tell me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it like 120%? I don't know. What were you saying just now? I believe it was like 120. <laughs> I think he literally just blew a patch on the back of that cat. Just neft all over the cat. He just neft There's all over that fucking cat's back. There's no the doubt cat. about it. And the cat just took off. He's shaking, scared shitless in the corner right now. Yeah, blink if you need. If you're kidnapped and being held against your will. Cat, cat please blink. <laughs> blink twice. Guys, it's mom. A little respect, all right? Okay, sorry, mom. Sorry, mom. Okay, Sorry. Howie, I hear what you're saying. My point is these people that are already underwater on GameStop are not going to sell sell their, their shares. What you're saying is there's many more people in institutions that own GameStop than all the hodlers that are underwater. That's well, your Chris, thesis, correct? If the short interest right now is 21%, which mm -hmm. Lily just confirmed, 21%, what's not to make – a couple of the big fellas come in and drive this fucking price down back to 25 or 30. And then all of a sudden we can take a look at it and the short, short interest might be 60, 70 or 80%. But well, my point is why would these guys buy GME? Why would the little guy buy GME when there's hardly any short interest? There's too many other stocks you can buy. I think they look at it as a buying opportunity because they're, they believe they literally believe in the stock. They, if you go deep on Wall Street bets, you look and see their their long term outlook on this stock. They believe in Ryan Cohen. They believe that this company is about to transition into something more than brick and mortar and end up in the e-commerce space and transforming this company. So is it overvalued? Of course it is. Yeah, let's there say are, that happens. Let's say and I think Ryan Cohen's excellent, too. And I think maybe they can keep this company alive, afloat. But let's say all this stuff happens. Okay, what's it valued? Probably a $30 stock, maybe. Most analysts would say you're way too high, Howie. You don't know what you dick from your ass. It's probably an $8 stock, not a $350 stock. So I just think on days when it goes up, look, I, I, I do the opposite, man. If it goes up 20 or 30% and I buy puts on it and it drops – 70, 80 points, and my puts are up 30, 40, 50%. I make money. I'm yeah, not a loyalist. My, I, I agree with you on puts, but I don't agree with you on uh, FDs. I don't agree with monthlies. I think if you want to short this stock, you need to be looking at leaps or at least a minimum of six to nine months <laughs> out on this. I'll go shorter just because there's a higher value involved. That's the only reason. Um, that That's why. I like and how far out of the money are you talking about? I mean, that's going to depend on how high that thing goes. But put it this way: if the stock goes to three fifty, uh, I'll probably or three seventy five or four hundred. Let's say it goes to four hundred, I'd probably buy the three seventy fives uh, puts two or three weeks out. All of a sudden, it drops down to two fifty. I make money. Yeah, I can't get behind you on this. It's just um, it's just too too risky for me. And let's not forget, we did play GameStop uh, at the beginning. We, I played it on the way up. Yeah. Uh, I was holding shares. And then I did buy some FDs with you, and I got killed. I got destroyed. And I made a little money. No, no. We both lost money on our first FDs. Oh, we the, first, the first GMEs. Yeah, yeah. We, we did make money yeah. on our monthlies that were a month out. So yes. what I'm saying is I think you're playing with fire if you're going to buy weekly puts on GameStop. I think it's too, too risky. So that's my personal advice. I well, will look you know what? That's the fun of this show, baby, because yeah, we're going to wait and see. 
I will post it. I'll show you. And you'll, the readers will know if I made money or not. Mom, dad, please stop fighting. And just to bring up that point, you know, this show is about work and balls, but uh, I am not going to be that guy that goes out there and say, I crush every time because I don't. What the reality is you and I are getting destroyed on these AMC puts. And I have no problem admitting that I will diamond hand them into the ground. Obviously they expire on the 19th, but this is very important to realize. And I want to put this analogy out there for our readers. You don't have to make every winning play. Nobody is going to bat a thousand unless they're ball work and Sam in the crypto world. And by the way, kid, your little hot streak, it will end at some point. Oh, so enjoy it while you can. The point is, this is the analogy I like to make. This is a game just like poker. And I've talked about poker in the past. It's about minimizing your mistakes. Everybody's going to make mistakes. The key is to make fewer mistakes than the next guy. So again, I'm fully willing to say I, I, I made a mistake on those puts and you know, we could see some volatility next week where if AMC drops 20, 30%, we are back in the green on those puts. But at this point, when I'm down 80 to 90%, and a lot of people ask me this, they're like, when do you decide to cut? And I'm like, well, when I'm down 80 to 90% on a put, I'm going to write it into the ground because I've seen it happen where two days before that put expires, the stock just plummets. So I'm willing to ride these out. And I'm assuming you're the same way on these AMC puts we're holding. I mean, with me, it all comes down to uh, <laughs> offsetting taxes. I mean, if if I look at my a cut taxable, a taxable account where I bought these puts in, and I say, wow, look, my last seven buys I made money on. Man, there's, I need it. Every now and then you need a tax loss. I mean, it, it offsets some of the gains. So I have no problem with it. I, I'm going to take a few beatings per year, but that I, that's normal. I mean, and it's not bad. It's healthy. It offsets gains. Uh, it'll offset those gains I make when I uh, buy these puts on GME and it starts dropping. So Yeah, and it's also humbling. It, re- it reminds you that you're not a god. You know, yeah, of course it, not. It, if you want them all, you know, it, there, there wouldn't be, there, it wouldn't be a game. It wouldn't be a challenge. So I think a good loss. Tight. I know it sounds nuts when you're talking about your money, but I do think a, a, a little loss at some point keeps you honest, yes. you know? And, and the, the, the whole truth is like, you're going to get crazy. I mean, Neff is like just inhaling cat shit, which does something to your brain. This guy could be going hard into this shit and never pull out. So it's like good to get a couple losses to reset you and understand that you don't walk on water and you're not b- bulletproof and you have to do your research yeah. and study and understand that man you gotta be hands on this stuff because the market could change real quick on you and you could be holding the back so it's all uh, about making educated decisions just educated decisions watching what the market does watching volume watching news watching when earnings comes out um seeing if some a stock is too extended like gme is right now um and also, like Chris said, Chris says he's afraid, and he has a point. Chris has a good point. He's afraid because he thinks all this um, this fake money coming in from the government is going to pump the shit out of some of these stocks. It may. Um, my point is on GME. I just think I've been watching that thing for two weeks, and there's been some big trades going in on the buy side. And, man, these aren't Reddit readers. These are These are sneaky bastards on Wall Street. Um, firing in a couple million dollars. So, you know, at some point, these guys are going to turn, they're going to short it, they're going to sell it, and it's going to it's going to start dropping. That's my feeling. All right. Well, guys, uh, it, it was a fun week. We got a week coming up. But, you know, a lot of you guys have been asking us about Bitcoin because apparently me crushing it isn't enough for you. So you want to hear somebody with a different voice say the same thing I've been telling you. And so we decided to get a uh, a, 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 a Bitcoin expert. Uh, Are you talking come- about the future? Yeah. I mean, we have a guest coming. This is where we introduce the guests. I, I know you're new to podcasts. I've been doing this. For Look at how e- Evan was how about 12. Face. Okay. So I've been doing this for a little while. So uh, real quick. Uh, before the cat lady jumps in again, I want you guys to um, enjoy this. Okay, we have we have 
Corey Trusick coming on. He's got a, a podcast called uh, Bitcoin Made Simple, and he kind of breaks it down. So enjoy it. Okay, so let's get into it, man. Uh, a lot of you guys keep asking for a Bitcoin specialist because apparently my fucking batting average of a thousand million isn't oh good enough God. for you guys. Okay. Jesus. But here we are. Uh, he's got a great podcast called Bitcoin Made Simple. Okay. Please welcome Corey Tusick. How are you, brother? I'm good. How are you? Uh, expert. That's uh, a little uh, maybe over the top, uh, but yes. I'll take that. Fake it till you make it, bro. Yeah, Fake I'll it till you it. make it, dude. You're going to get some of that crypto ass down the line. So some of our, we got a lot of OnlyFans that listen to this. So they might be hitting you up with, you know, exchange for a dollar Bitcoin for a free month subscription to the <laughs> foot porn. Um, yes. Okay. Now we can start the cats here so we can finally start the show. Uh, Which cat is this? That's mom, dude. You know what mom looks like. <laughs> okay. I love he that just you got went a little full, bit. He just went full-blown Steven Seagal in like yeah. six seconds. Yeah, like that. Amazing. Hey, hey, keep your fantasies to yourself. We have a guest <laughs> on the show. <laughs> so, Corey, tell us a little bit about your podcast. Uh, so, I started the podcast um, because um, there's going to be a huge class of 2021, 2020 coming in that are brand new to Bitcoin. Um, and I wanted to basically make something like as simple, like, you know, if you've never heard about it, you could walk in and get it. Like if the only thing I don't explain is if you do not understand like the acronyms, you know, like HODL and stuff like that, it's like, just Google it. You can figure that out on your own. Um, but yeah. And then I figure there's a ton of people in the world that, you know, I could kind of get in touch with like on the Bitcoin side. And ask them, like, I'm not afraid to ask the stupid question. Like when they say, like, when they talk about something crazy and I'm like, okay, what does that mean? You know, like the thing that when you're listening to a podcast, you're like pretending like, oh, yeah, I know what they're talking about. And you have no idea. So I'm not afraid to say that stuff. And then also, um, uh, you know, it, with my roots in the, the you know, film world and stuff like that, I think, you know, it might be able to relay it in a different way than most people that are coming straight from the finance world. Corey, that's great. I don't know, Chris, you missed out, but uh, Corey just big, gave us a uh, 10 episode guarantee for the hot new animation Cash Daddies. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's amazing. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I'm he only always... did deals with me, uh, and Howie, and Evan, but you, you'll be like an extra passing through. You'll be like, <laughs> like you know, guy in the back. The, Buddy, with also, the animation uh, extra is that you don't actually get to be there. It's just a picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Buddy, as long as there's some craft services, I'm in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's that's 2020 was rough, all right? And I'll <laughs> take that D-level craft services where they just leave out like granola bars and slices of orange. Oh, and, yeah. Like, yeah, where like they just had, to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like when you were playing soccer as a kid, they were like, this is it, buddy. You get an yeah. apple. You get an yeah. apple. You you know, getting, some fruit snacks and like a bag of pretzels that's in like yeah. a Ziploc bag. No Gatorade, no filet mignon. Just Give me that water. snackables, dude. I'll take snackables all day. I'll throw a little ham and cheese on that with a cracker and a little side of Reese's Pieces. I'm all in, dog. I'm all Lord. in. So, so the biggest question we get is like where to get started in Bitcoin. That's what everybody wants to know. Uh, I always talk Coinbase because I think it's the simplest way. The fees are high, but I think it's the simplest way. Where, where, Corey, do you think somebody who wants to, you know, slowly become one of these Bitcoin pirates? I talk about the crypto pirates. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where, where do you think they should start? Um, like you said, Coinbase is a great one. Um, uh, there's also Kraken. Um, Kraken, it's K-R-A-K-E-N. Uh, it's another great exchange. Um, there's Binance. There's uh, Gemini, which is founded by the uh, the, Winkle, uh, the Winklevoss. We call uh, them twins. the Twinklevosses. We know who yeah. they are. Yeah. Yeah, Twinklevosses. Uh, I love that. I love once the, that. Once they went into Bitcoin, I knew it was a good idea because they're really, they came in right after it started. And the, anything that they get on right after it starts usually takes off. So I was like, all right. Sounds I'm like Sam this. at a Friday night at a strip club. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, Mr. Jizz in your pants. <laughs> you wouldn't know that because you're out in 10 minutes. Okay. So, so here's my whole thing. Yeah. The, the Twinkle Brothers, right. Or whatever they're called. Um, they're behind this digital art thing that's going on. And 
They're like, they're really invested in it to the point. I wouldn't doubt if they're behind a lot of these really high end buys that are going on to kind of be like, Oh, look at this. There's a lot of money in there. Boom. As soon as like a cap picture sold for 600,000. Now everybody's in there. It is go. I think it, it's going to be a huge market where it will end up. I do not know. So here's the whole thing. Like we, the funniest thing about crypto is that there's like a bazillion cryptos, right? Mm -hmm. And like, there's not one wallet that has every, every crypto. Now, most of them have the two big ones, which are, are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, Corey, um, we have a, a theory and I'd like to see if you could correct us on here. Uh, Bitcoin is the sun, right? <laughs> that revolves that all the other bitcoins revolve around would you say that's an accurate statement um yeah so i would say oh, that's accurate thank you. because i'm like the all the other cryptos go with bitcoin no matter what as many you know people try to say that something will be better there's any kind of flaw in bitcoin um and so you know i, I guess you could say i've turned into a bitcoin maximalist um and I, I took the journey, you know, when I started, I'm like, oh, you know, there's Bitcoin, there's Ethereum, there's there's this, there's that. I'm going to check them all out, you know, and find all their positives. And then you come down to it and you end up, you take the journey that most people take, where as they go along, all of a sudden you're like, you know what, it really is Bitcoin. The rest of them, if you want to day trade, you can make some money by, you know, kind of riding the wave on certain ones. You can see the benefits that they might have, um, like like Monero. Um, what's the one that's the brave a browser? It's a it's called the basic attention token, yeah. um, which is like, uh, you know, if you use the Brave browser, you can earn it. And that one has some, you know, you can see where it's going to rise. But ultimately, like you said, it all depends on what Bitcoin does. And like I, I explain Bitcoin versus like Ethereum is, and like other cryptocurrencies is like there's a reason that um, like Hydrox cookies exist. And it's because there's it's for people that want to eat an Oreo, but are willing to pay less money for a crappy taste. <laughs> that's totally it dude it, it and i don't mean it. i don't mean that as like an insult to the other coins but it's just like it's like like if you look at Ether ethereum's main problem is there's no there's no cap on it there's they, they could they could print money just like get into Ted that has. that is a big part of everything yeah i didn't know that so so the the Shocker. thing that, that, that <laughs> So the thing about about uh, you know Bitcoin is it was created and do you have any uh, Nakasaki Nakamoto or whatever his name is yeah. Satoshi Karate or whatever his name is right? No more no, Mr. Robato. Oh, come on, come on. Great, we're gonna have Jeremy Lin complaining about this show by the end of it. Okay, all right. So uh, you have uh, you you have uh, Panda Express, whoever he is, making this whole fucking coin. Uh, and it, it, the whole point of it is to be to have a limited amount, a yep. limited amount. So it's the opposite of the fiat dollar, which they're just printing these fucking hobbits, these hobbit looking people in fucking uh, the Federal Reserve. Weirdos who look like they're like, yeah, you know, they're like mm -hmm. creepy looking. They're, yeah. you know, they live at the Shire. Yeah. They, for some they, reason, you think that Oompa Loompas run the Fed like you've been inside, like they let you near that place. Yeah. Have you guys seen the picture uh, of the dude, guy who runs the Fed for the Euro, uh, for uh, the um, EU? Yeah. It no. looks like his Did jacket's you... hanging on by a thread, like his button on his suit jacket is hanging on for dear life. Like that I can't is, believe that it's not a trans. Is. Yeah. <laughs> How long to a trans is running the Fed? <laughs> we need dollars that go both ways. But the point yeah. is this, dude. They're going to print unlimited money, which is going to destroy the dollar, right? Yep. Uh, Bitcoin is set at the hard uh, cap at 21 million. Now, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Corey, isn't there a chance like when it gets to a certain point that they'll add like a couple more billion down the road or like in five years or 10 years, didn't they have the opportunity? No. So they actually, it'll never increase beyond okay. 21 million. Okay. Um, what it could can do. And there's, you know, people that say it won't happen, but it can, uh, you know, Bitcoin can be broken down into 100 million Satoshis and the smallest unit is a Satoshi. Um, but in theory, you know, there's people that have talked about maybe, you know, in the year 2124, they're going to 
break it down, like be, break that Satoshi down further. But it's like, that's not going to happen in my lifetime. So I don't care. Um, right. But yeah, so it, it is like, you know, it's funny. Some of these like morons in the Fed and like Janet Yellen and all these people that you would think are really smart. They're like, you can't like, you know, Bitcoin's not finite because you can divide it infinitely. And it's like, OK, you take one pizza and slice it up to eight slices or 16 or 21 million. How are you? You know, are you going to is everybody going to get fed like they don't understand? They think that that's money printing and they don't understand the opposite. So, yeah, so Satoshi understood the problem that existed, which was the money printing. And he released the Bitcoin on October 31st, 2008. So right when the crash happened and um, and they printed money and bailed out the banks because the banks were too big, to uh, too big to fail. Um, and uh, so that leads this would be good for your tinfoil hat uh, podcast. This leads to my theory that I think he's from the future because I was like, maybe he sent it back at the perfect time because it was all of a sudden the government started printing money like crazy. And I don't know, do you guys know about like quantitative easing and everything that's happened since then? Yeah, of course. I do, but explain it to the other guys. Oh, Jesus so, Christ. So the, the quantity, this is what, like I, when they printed money last spring for COVID is whenever I went pretty big into Bitcoin for the first step. I'm, I had been paying attention and then I was like, all right, I'm putting a ton in. And then I found about quantitative easing. So with the printing they did last year, 25% of the US dollars in circulation did not exist prior to COVID. And, but what I found out was that 70% of the US dollars that are in circulation did not exist prior to 2008. And they've, all they've been doing, the market has been propped up by this money printing that's been happening since the housing crash. And so the moment that they turn off that printer, they're kind of in a position where they can't stop the printing. They have to do it. Otherwise, it's going to be the apocalypse in their world. But Bitcoin comes in and makes this solution where you can't fudge the numbers. You can't, you can't create more. Um, I mean, because that's what the inflation is, is. The inflation is basically taxing people for just holding on to their money. There's people who who are who are experts in Bitcoin that believe Bitcoin is the second coming of Jesus, and that and that it because the coin ebbs and flows with humanity, right? When like when things start going good, Bitcoin goes up. When things go bad, Bitcoin goes down. So I mean, Jesus it is it, it's Christ. interesting, dude. There is. Yeah, there's a lot of people that go down different theories. And it's like, I think the coolest one is make it like it's like a, like interstellar, you know, where they uh, set up that tesseract and caught like from the future. They set up that thing that caught Matthew McConaughey. Or like maybe that's what they did. They were like, hey, look, like the evil empire is going to take over and turn into this oligarch that's going to destroy the world. But if we change the financial system in 2008, that saves us from it. Howie, I see you cringing in the background. Yeah, Howie, and, why don't uh, you bring your Neanderthal fucking boomer ass into this thing and tell us to get off your fucking lawn? Well, all I know is Sam said, when things go good, Bitcoin goes up. When the, you're having a shitty day, maybe you don't get as much ass as you thought you would. You, you hit happy hour too late. That's a day when Bitcoin goes down. What the? Where, where did that come up with? I want to see a, a chart. Humanity, on. not you, Howie. Not you individually. Humanity. Howie is so you, not. You want to see chart? You, you're a chart guy then. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to see a little technical analysis on, you know, man, China's having a beautiful day. Australia's happier than shit. Americans are <laughs> hugging each other and fucking Bitcoin's at 75,000. Yeah. yeah just you know. Can you show me a little uh, technical analysis on that time travel theory as well? Uh, because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to mislead our readers in the wrong direction. Okay. Yeah, I don't want them what, to what think. direction would that be? Sci-fi space travel? What are you talking about the wrong direction? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about, dude? We, you have two grown men, both well-versed in Bitcoin, talking to two guys who can do a show half an hour late. If you can't even get time right, hey, don't talk to us about time travel. It was Sammy, daylight savings roll. time. It was daylight savings time, all right? My clocks didn't reset. Oh, I'm Sammy, sorry. You were saying good things. You were on a roll. We were all learning. I felt like you were the fucking Dalai Lama. And then all of a sudden, you went off the road with, yeah, man, Bitcoin is along with humanity. 
Yeah. And people are hugging and rubbing each well, other's ass. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've got a flux oil. capacitor. Like and uh, I got I got a flux capacitor. And, you know, I just went uh, back in time and dropped some Satoshis on you guys to save humanity. <laughs> this is a this is a this is Jesus's work. Good fucking Lord. Let's stay on target for today. <laughs> it was, here, yeah. so you want to you get out of the mystical and go to the church? Oh, no, I like yeah. this place yeah. we're in. <laughs> I want to see some hard stone facts. Like when I looked at Mana this morning or Mana or whatever the fuck you call it, it literally went from 94 to 115. And I'm looking at the chart. Chart looks good. I'm like, that's probably going to go higher. Oh, and by the way, Jesus, everybody. By the way, the guy shitting on my theory about Jesus coins and time travel told me he's going to buy mana at the dip. It's a dollar, dude. How much of a dip do you got to get? It's a literally a dollar. You can't even get a hamburger anymore for one of that. But you're waiting for it to dip? It's like, how long do you want it to be? Negative five cents? It buy jumped it up now. a lot. It jumped up a hey. lot yesterday. So I was thinking, and it went back down to 91. And I had, I was looking to pull it. I was looking to put it on the trigger. Dude, what, what stock have you bought literally in the last year that has been a dollar? None, because we don't dabble in penny stocks, bro. Yeah, I, I, the closest thing I bought, I bought DSX at a dollar forty, and it's at three. It's at uh, three forty. Hey, a little respect. We've had, we've had our interjections. Can we get back to Corey? I was actually yeah. learning something. Uh, the look yeah. on Corey's really face, he knows I'm that. winning. Okay, I gotta wait uh, for the dip. What do you want? A nickel? What is this? 1920s? You want to buy a newspaper, asshole? I know that's when you were born. Okay, listen to me. It's or, there's no dip. Just buy it. And shut up. Dip, Go on, Corey. Dip, I'm dip. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally, you're I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you're I gotta kick out the Neanderthals. Uh, no, so uh, and just for your listeners to know, I don't. They're readers, believe, so you know. Oh yeah, readers. Uh, yeah, we don't I, have listeners, do we? Have readers. Okay. Obviously, I, based on the, the information medium, you're yeah. hearing from these two guys, they're still reading newspapers. <laughs> the um, yeah, the I don't actually believe Satoshi's from the future, so I don't want anyone to think, oh God, I gotta buy this because it's from the future. I do. But, hey, <laughs> if you're gonna buy it, that's great because it means the price goes up. So, um, but yeah, so, as far as charts go, you should check out. Um, there's this guy called Plan B uh, on Twitter. His uh. It's like it's a plan B 100 uh, trillion USD is his thing. Um, and he does a stock to flow model, you know, so the stock to flow model with gold. He basically extrapolated that across um, across Bitcoin's history and He's the tampon of crypto. I guess. Sorry, sorry I'm <laughs> yeah. it, but they're not. all. It, uh, okay. But it mark it that actually, down. Can we edit that one out? As as much as it goes up and down, no, don't mark it down. I let it let them hear it. We're we're, we're posting Neff's L's right now online. Okay, so please keep that go go on. Sorry, Corey. No, you're good. Um, so even though it's pretty volatile along the line of the stock to flow, it actually is the thing that's most predictive of where the price is going to go. Like a lot of people that follow the stock to flow are not surprised at all that we're sitting at sixty thousand dollars of Bitcoin. Um, and you know, it's, it's been pretty accurate. It'll probably, you know, based on the stock to flow hit like 150 at some point this year, maybe up to 288 to 300. Um, the thing is, is that it is a, not only is it a finite amount, but are you guys familiar with the halvings and how that works and how there's a supply suffoc suffocation over time? No, no, yeah. Talk about that. Cause that's a big deal. Yeah. So with another thing I want to get into. So if, you, if you're if you getting into Bitcoin, you'll hear them talk about the Bitcoin halving. Um, and the Bitcoin halving is that initially when you solved a block on the blockchain, you got 50 uh, Bitcoin as a reward. And Satoshi scheduled it to every about four years, cut that reward in half. <coughs> so in 2013, it went to, or 2012-13, it went down to 25, then it went down to 12 and a half. And then in 2020, it dropped down to 6.25 Bitcoin per uh, per block. So there's less Bitcoin going in as the demand goes up. And then also we have a lot of uh, companies now like BlockFi. And um, I mean, there's a handful of them where you can lend your Bitcoin, but you have to over collateralize the loan. 
So basically, if you have 100K in Bitcoin, you can somebody can borrow $50,000 against that. Um, and so that's even going to be a further supply suffocation because there's less and less coins going around. Um, you know, and, and the next halving is going to be around 2024. And each reward will be three uh, 3.125 Bitcoin. So it's just there's less Bitcoin available as time goes on. Um, so that's going to drive never, up the price. That's just going to drive up the price. Yeah, exactly. Which is why the stock to flow, why I believe it's going to be the most accurate. No. And then now there's some billionaires, you know, getting into it and just buying like billions of dollars worth. And that might be the thing that accelerates this beyond into like what they call hyper Bitcoinization, where it just takes off and is never heard from again. And it's and it's the it's the the standard eventually. So question, um, do you dabble in altcoins? Um, and if so, um, wh which which coins have you had success with in the past? Um, the basic attention token was decent. Um, it's called BAT. Um, and it's it's basically like you get rewarded for you can set it up on the Brave browser and just earn it while you're browsing. And it'll say like, hey, you know, here's an ad you can look at. You can click on that. But you can also buy it. Um, so I've had some success with that. I um, mean, Ethereum. It's crazy. Like, I, I mean, I sold everything and it's now all in Bitcoin. But like I with Ethereum, that tripled for me and that was pretty good. Um, and it, But it does go with Bitcoin. I mean, in theory, if I would have just put that money in Bitcoin, it would have basically come out the same um there's well a, here's the, the thing one? here's Mon the thing. monero is a decent one just because of the privacy i think that that could be hot this year because privacy is so you know i mean we've seen how you know the social media companies are taking everybody down and you know we need everything to be decentralized so i think that could be hot this year you know but i don't know if i'm necessarily going to sell bitcoin into that monero has less less coins available when it's all done, then Bitcoin. So there's even more scarcity when it comes to that. And basically what's going on right now is that the, the market's trying to figure out the practical use a lot with a lot of these coins, including Bitcoin. It could be the transactions, they say, are a little slower. Now you're finding these other coins are getting a little quicker at, um, you know, transactions, you know, mm -hmm. instantaneous. Bitcoin takes a little longer. But that's okay. I mean, but here's the thing. Once they figure out the practical application for Bitcoin, then they'll move into these tech coins. And like these tech coins are the future. Like it is going to be how people deal with like how they do commerce. Like when we we're talking mana, I told you guys that that's what the nerd dorks are using for this virtual reality stuff. And it's and now that these NFTs or whatever they're called, they're blowing up, right? They're blowing up. That's just going to push more and more people into this virtual reality world. And <coughs> that's why man has seen such a giant jump is because more and more people are getting in to that buying plots of land in virtual reality. And this is just the beginning. I mean, I only heard about this less than a year ago. So just imagine what's going to be in three, four, five years. And that's the biggest thing. You know, when you talk about, Bump and dump and all this stuff. Pump and dump, excuse me. Jesus. You know, everyone wants to do it on, okay, Neff. Everybody wants to do it on uh, uh, with, with digital currencies. But to me, that's not how this works. That is taking stock market mentality into digital currency. For me, it's like grab these coins and hold them for a, 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 a while, man. I mean, like, I mean... Buy as much as you can. It would be cool hanging out for a year, two years, three years. Because where we are in three years, I mean, just take three years back in time. What was going on with digital currency? Not a lot. Only the crypto pirates were into it. Now, just fast forward three years from now. I mean, it's going to be everywhere. Yeah. And, and if I can interject, Corey, we have a question for you because – NFTs are just exploding and there's so much talk right now that this is a scam. Um, I think the reverse. I like to be involved in things that people know nothing about mm -hmm. and uh, are fearful of. So my feeling is we're on the dawn of a new revolution in crypto and NFTs are exactly that. I feel like NFTs are what people thought Bitcoin was 10 years ago. I don't get it. What's your take on NFTs? Because we have tons of people, especially on the Discord, saying, 
I don't know and understand F- NFTs. Can you give us more information? Yeah, I think NFTs are really cool because, you know, I mean, for me coming from, you know, like I buy, sell movies, produce movies and distribution, all that paying royalties out to artists is a big part of what I do. And I love the fact that this is something that can basically democratize that, decentralize it, you know, because if you sell a piece of art, you can set it up so that you get a royalty every time it sells in in perpetuity. Um, you know, I think they, on average, are taking like a 10% royalty. So that guy that just sold a collage for $67 million. People. Yeah. If that if they turn around and sell that for $100 million, that guy's going to get another $10 million, you know, and so I think there's a lot of value to that. Um, I think what will happen is that things like NFTs will eventually get merged and built on top of the uh, Bitcoin because um, there's a lot of things that get built on top of Bitcoin. Um, and and I think that that'll eventually be the way. But, you know, people are getting really weird about like, oh, you know, I, I, I can't own like what, what's the point of owning it? Um, I mean, I get it because like but it's also the same as like you could print a copy of the Mona Lisa, but if you don't own it, like if, if you're an art trader, it makes sense, you know, because you have the original, you know, there's a, there's value in that. Um, me personally, I mean, I'm not an art trader, but I do think that there's some value into the, the, the way that NFTs are getting set up and, and how royalties can be distributed forever. Cause I think that eventually you could avoid piracy, you know, I mean, you guys are comedians. So it's like you put something on a some stand-up special are. on YouTube and then it gets, you know, it's, it gets pirated and, you know, a bunch of different channels download it and put it up. But I think NFTs as a structure is something that can, you know, ensure that royalties get paid to people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it's interesting. Um, I even thought I'm like, oh, I should make some NFTs and just like, see, like make like a handful of things and just throw them out there, see what happens, you know? Um, but I do think that it's fascinating. It's just a different market. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's basically, it's it's art trading and and if you're but, into that but it but it is also not art trading i mean you have people putting up sketches of cats that an 8 year old could do that are going yeah. for $170,000 so is the, could this be a manipulative coordination by somebody and the rug yeah. pull the rug pulls right around the corner because people are buying it because they they have to be in whatever's hot and they they, they don't realize they're involved in a scam. That's the flip side that we keep hearing from people. Like trading cards. It's like you were talking about last week, trading cards. I saw where this weekend, like Gronkowski came out and he's all into these new EFTs with his digital cards. And I just wonder, you know, uh, how many different entities could get a hold of that thing and, and make it a real crooked business. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it could flip on its head real quick. So that's why yeah. I say if you're if you're interested in, you know, art art trading, then it's I would go for it. But if you're looking for something, you know, and like I said, I think that the the structure of paying royalties and all that kind of stuff can be very useful if it's merged into the Bitcoin platform and and kind of has its own platform built on top of it. Um, but as far as like the the pump and dump i mean that that is the thing like altcoin season happened you know that's the that's the sketchy thing with all the different cryptocurrencies is like they do pre-mining you know like they'll they'll do an ico an initial coin offering and like the people who created it will like automatically own 25 percent of the coins before you can even mine them you know and then they're just like pumping the price and and they don't care what happens at that point um you know they made their money off the that is uh rxp right that's the big problem they have with them they they pre-mined all of it they didn't release all of it so anytime XRP? they want to manipulate xrp yes yeah don't want yeah. anybody making the wrong move and buying something because you yeah so man but, i mean woke up sassy today huh bud a little bit <laughs> a little bit but nfts I, though like it's it's kind of like you know, you were saying with with Howie with the the trading cards. Um, yeah. a, a friend of mine made this documentary called uh, um, uh, "Jack of All Trades." His name's uh, St- uh, Stu Stone, and then it's on Netflix. If you ever check it out, it's cool. It's, it's one, tra- I've seen it twice. Yeah, it's just really cool about trading cards and everything. About but how like it, basically one guy brought down the whole entire uh, yeah. business. Yeah, and I think that that's a very telling story. You know, it's like you, their baseball cards are valuable, you know, or were at a point. Sure. But there's nothing, you know, with NFTs and any of these other cryptocurrencies, there's nothing 
stopping people from manipulating it. Like even the guy who made Ethereum, that's why I like the fact that Satoshi is anonymous because you can't pinpoint one person and be like, this is the Bitcoin Jesus, you know, um, where Ethereum, they have this guy Vitalik who created Ethereum and basically broke it off from Bitcoin. And like they had them this huge security problem over the summer and they were like, oh, like a bunch of coins went somewhere by accident or something. And he just like erased it. He just went into the program and erased it. And it's like, uh, I don't know if I, I mean, we all know humans are by nature going to be ruthless and, and, you know, backstab people. So I don't want people to have control over, you know, so that's why I'm wary about NFTs from an investment standpoint. It's like, yeah. geez, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know who's making these random cat drawings and selling. My, my biggest concern about all this virtual stuff, and this comes from Tim Fall Hat, is there's this, this video that's from the World Economic Forum. And it says, in the year 2030, you will own nothing. And to me, this is sitting, fitting right into that, okay? Mm-hmm. That's fitting right into it. Now you could say that could be applied to stocks. I mean, to uh, to digital currency. Well, you could apply that to stocks as well. Do you, you know, are stocks physical? Is it like a brick? Can I go grab my stock? No. So, but I do get worried about these kids being excited about buying virtual land, virtual paintings, virtual cards, and, and not actually owning the tangible bit. So for me, man, if like, if the blessings from the crypto gods happen and these altcoins blow up and those who are smart enough to get in now uh, see the fruits of that, that, you know, you're smart enough to grab those some money from that and start buying physical stuff and but not like cars, but like land houses, mm-hmm. guns, you know, things that are actually tangible gold, precious metals, all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, that is a, that is the game that is, can be played okay with all this digital that they could just simply i don't know turn it all off but good luck getting or your money you out of the, the bank matrix. right or they could just plug you in the, like that's what i'm waiting for is like all these people that buy digital or virtual currency or vir- virtual land and then they're gonna be like hey do you want to go live in that like here just sit back in this chair we're gonna plug this thing into the back of your head and you can live there as long as you want <laughs> and the next thing you know uh yep, so here we know. are straight up batteries yeah. What's your thoughts, Corey, on oversaturation in the marketplace, um, specifically with altcoins? Because that's my big concern. I see things like mana blowing up or, you know, these these altcoins. And I want to I want to get involved. But my concern is every time I look at like the discord or, or just anywhere, people are like, oh, are you in this? Oh, it just blew up. Oh, are you in this? And you start to feel overwhelmed that you're going to make the wrong decision because there's so many choices. Are you mm-hmm. concerned that people are going to come out with these, these coins with unlimited supplies and pump them up and dump them? Um, I mean, is there anything you would recommend staying away from in the altcoin universe? Um, I mean, to from my Bitcoin maximalist standpoint, I would say to stay away from all of them. <laughs> but, you know, there are a handful. There's basically a handful of all stars. Um, but they're they're not going to be like anything that you're hoping is going to like pump like 10x you stand the chance to get really burnt by um you know especially if it's brand new and you don't know much about it so i would just be weary and i mean i would tell people like over time if you just keep if they they in the bitcoin world they say stack sats you know just keep you know uh stacking satoshis um you know a little bit at a time and then you'll find out like oh my god like that you know, if you kind of forget about it, set it and forget it um, instead of chasing the ups and downs of of all the altcoins. That, that is one of the things I'm afraid of whenever people come in, like they see, you know, you go into Coinbase and there's like 50 cryptocurrencies you can buy. And you're like, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? Um, you know, well, so my you question get- is, guys, how is that any different than stocks? I mean, are there four stocks? Are there five stocks? There's got to be what thousands yeah. and thousands of stocks and yeah, you- a huge difference stocks are actual companies they're companies with employees that actually have a profit they have a uh, not all that's true there was actually movies that the chinese were creating fake they were buying 
dead companies on on the Nasdaq on Wall Street creating these it's shell companies. The China hustle. We've seen it. Yeah, so, I mean, but that's that's one billionth of one percent. I mean, come on, we've had companies that have been on the exchange for hundreds of years. So yeah. not only I mean, that, Sam, what I'm concerned about is market cap. If I buy a stock, I know exactly how many shares are at are that exist within that company. My concern is buying these speculative cryptos where they're like, how what's the supply? And it says unlimited or unknown. That's my concern. Yeah, I don't want to buy then you don't buy it. Most of these things give you the market cap. Now, I'm not saying what you're you're saying is totally wrong, but you literally just answered your question. That's my whole thing. It's just like there, this is this is no different. Yes, Howie's right. Most of these things are connected to a company. So you believe, right? I mean, how many times do you actually go look at the company that you're investing in to make sure it does have all that stuff? You have to do your research besides just listening to me because I'm batting a hundred thousand. Okay. Outside of that, please. Do don't, your please research. Don't, please don't suck your, your dick while a guest is on the Why? show. Why? You're mad you can't no, suck no, your own we dick. Have, we have designated fucking ball working time. That's not this port of the, portion of the show. This is Corey's time. Okay. Wait, to, wait wait in line and you will get your balls worked. Oh, man. I used my Manscaped on my nuts today because I knew it was going to get worked. You guys sponsored by No Manscaped. free ads yet. No, Manscaped. we're not. No but free we're ads yet. We should. Yeah. We should talk to Manscaped going, we got enough, and we have a thing called Work Your Balls Awards. Who gets yeah, your balls actually, would be perfect. That'd be perfect, yeah. Get um, them on the um, phone. I, I'm you know, glad you said, you're on here, Corey, because I got the, the crypto itch because I see all these, and I'm a stock guy, just so you know. I see mm -hmm. all these you know, altcoins blowing up, and the, like this weekend, uh, my buddy was like, you got to buy Hoge <laughs> right now. And he literally 140 x on Hoge. And I was like, all right, I'm joining. How do I do it? I go to Coinbase. I can't buy it. I go to Coinbase Pro. I can't buy it. So before I know it, I have a MetaMask account. And then I'm on Uniswap. And I'm transferring the Ethereum in there to, to buy this Hoge coin. And that's, I think, what people get confused about. They're like, how do I do this? We keep getting that question. I want to get this coin, but how do I do it? Is there is there something you would recommend for people to go a certain... Um, I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. A certain wallet where it's beneficial to do this. Cause after I bought it, people were like, why did you buy it on MetaMask? Why didn't you just go to Uniswap? You just screwed yourself on gas fees. So if people are interested in dabbling in the altcoin world, is there a place they should, they should utilize to do this? Yeah. I would say something like Uniswap, like, cause like you said, the gas fees and having to transfer it from which the gas fees are basically the fee you pay to get it on the Ethereum blockchain and transferred over. Um, and they're like outrageous. So like I, I tried to do one thing in one time, I, I think I sent like $3 and the gas fees, I was testing a wallet and the gas fees were like $35. Yeah. Like I lost thirty two dollars just for transferring it. Jesus. Yeah, that's oh, why Polygon so big. Hey, admittingly, um, I bought the the OG Cash Daddy's NFT that the Art of Getting Up made, and he put it on Mintable, and uh, it was one hundred and twenty buy it now, and I paid another one hundred and sixty in gas fees. And for me, I was like, I don't care about the gas fees. I want this bad enough. I'm just going to mm -hmm. pay for it. So that's the other thing. Um, I, real quick, as far as NFTs, where are they being platformed? Because all I know so far is Mintable and Rarible. Um, do you know yeah, of other locations? Uh, what's the name of, there's one that's something about like an ocean. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should know that better. Um, there's a handful of them, but yeah, Rarible is pretty much the best. Open that I would go to. Uh, yeah. Open sea. That's right. Um, and, um, is that your yeah. safe word? Little Lee? <laughs> open sea. <C. laughs> open sea. Open sea. <laughs> but the, uh, but yeah, I would, I would say check out those. I mean, with with some of those ones, if you're a stock guy and you're into, I mean, because you're, you're basically gambling with the altcoins, you know what I mean? And <laughs> if you're looking to make educated bets, then that's something that you can get into. For me, you know, like what I did was I put literally everything into Bitcoin, like cashed out 401ks, everything, and wow. just went all in. And, and for me, I'm not even planning on touching that Bitcoin until I'm retired. Like so maybe. are you in the market or are you all in crypto? 
All in crypto, all in Bitcoin. I love it. I love it. And what, and if you don't mind me asking, what percentage would you say is just the sun, meaning Bitcoin? Uh, 99.99%. Okay. okay. I mean, if you look at Bitcoin, if you, if you guys, like what you said, do your research, like that's the best recommendation for anybody that's looking to get into it. Thank you. Because once I started to find out that basically Bitcoin is a black hole that is going to suck in every currency and absorb it. I mean, it was doing it to the US dollar and now they're printing like crazy. And it's just, it's everybody I know, like I'm talking to, you know, my in-laws or anybody I know that is getting a stimulus check. And I'm like, hey, unless you need that money, I would put that right into Bitcoin. Because it is, yeah, I mean, and we see the same thing with GameStop. That's our theory that this fourteen hundred dollars. All these people that have been watching GameStop on the sidelines are like, "I'm buying GameStop. I don't want to miss this this party." So I, I I do believe in what you're saying, but I think there's a correlation to the stock market as well when it yeah. comes to that. I actually did try to I tried to buy GameStop, um, and I it grew a little bit, and then I and then the other thing I dabbled in was Airbnb because I had seen so many people talk it. about Airbnb, and I'm like. They said it was going to open at like 60. And I'm like, no, that thing's worth like 130, 140. Popped at 146. I bought it at 146. So I tried to like get in. I'm thinking if I could buy it at 60. But that was when I learned that the stock market has this like little hour and a half period where they all get together and like make deals before the average guy can get in and actually buy something. So by the time it became available, it was like 120 bucks. Like, what the hell? 146. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm, I was planning on you know, doubling my money immediately. But just to give you some perspective since then, um, cause, cause I bought it at the IPO, I think it's up 38% since IPO. So you can't complain about, you know, uh, uh, you know, a return like that in what three and a half months. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, no, that's, that's the fuckery behind wall street, you know, and then just to go down that rabbit hole a little bit more, if you're connected, like Howie, you get pre IPO pricing. Oh, which, snaps. Oh, nice. So Howie's in that room doing the deals. Oh, yeah. Once in a while, I get thrown a bone. I get my big 25, 50 shares. Yeah, and, you know, I think that that's what you're going to see across the board is everybody is moving to something that can be a store of value. You know, and in my opinion, there's no better store of value than Bitcoin. Um, but, I mean, you, you know, if you're doing the stocks, I mean, as long as you're picking the right ones, you know, you can't beat that as long as you're Jesus. you're looking to preserve your wealth and instead of putting it in the bank. I mean, do you see in your, in some parts of Europe they're doing negative interest rates? Yeah, I think it was Denmark. I read that they were doing that. Dude, uh, that is nuts. That is nuts. That now they're pulling money out to cover their losses. No, but Welcome you can get a mortgage. To socialism. You can get negative interest rates on a on a mortgage. I'll give you negative interest rates on a mortgage. But. You don't even know what a mortgage is. Um, nice. Uh, any more questions? Because or not, we're going to let Corey uh, go get off the show and shower to get the stink from the show off him. We appreciate you slumming with us over here on Cash Daddies. Oh, and no I have one question for Corey. Uh, of go course, for it. of course. Aren't you a little bit concerned of – uh, p throwing all of your eggs in the proverbial one basket with this Bitcoin play. Do you have any concerns about being too leveraged into one position? No. I mean, it's something that you can watch 24 seven, mm -hmm. you know, so if it was ever going to fall apart, but um, you know, I, that's what I initially did was I'm like, okay, I got to diversify, spread it across, you know, multiple things. And, and the more I read it and the further I went down the rabbit hole, I was like, oh, my God, this is it. Like, this is the only thing, um, you know, so like even if, you know, even if we were to fall 50 percent tomorrow, I'm just I wouldn't even I'd be like, all right, whatever. Are you and hodling I, I actually, or are you tra are you trading or are you just dollar cost averaging your ass into this? Um, <laughs> I'm, so I'm hodling, but I guess I guess dollar cost averaging in a sense but it's basically anything that comes above and beyond what like my regular personal cash flow is mm -hmm. i just don't leave it in the bank i just send it 
like I'm waiting for my bank to shut me down because I'm just exporting like everything. I'm just like, nope, that one, it stays there for half a day. I'm like, yeah, you get paid. And see, I have the same theory that I only keep money in my account enough to cover my bills. The rest goes into the market. And now it's starting to go into crypto. <laughs> but well, another I think one thing I wanted to mention too, with you guys were saying about using it, have you heard about the lightning network? Like, No, tell as, us about it. Because a lot of people, you know, that's the big there was a, a fork in the Bitcoin world back in 2016, 17. Uh, this one guy, I feel bad for him, Roger Veer. He was like one of the initial Bitcoin guys. And he believed it basically needed to be like a PayPal for like poor countries. Um, and that's not, that doesn't really solve the problem. So he, they, they call it a fork and he forked off and created Bitcoin cash. So if you're looking at buying something Bitcoin, do not buy Bitcoin cash. Oh snaps! Um, and uh, and so that was his. He wanted to solve the payment solution. Their big thing was you can't go buy a cup of coffee with it. You know, like with what does that matter? You know, what I mean, like as far as do you buy it with gold? You don't. You don't take a coin, a, a gold coin down to Starbucks. So um, the Lightning Network is a payment system that's a layer on top of Bitcoin, and it basically takes off like. A tran it does does an on chain tran uh, transaction that takes, um, you know, let's say one Bitcoin off, and then between two people it creates a side channel, and then they can exchange that back and forth as much as possible until they finally settle it back onto the chain. So this layer it keeps growing, and they'll be able to do like instantaneous payments. So they can handle more payments than Visa can per second. Um, and it's all on Bitcoin. So it's, it's, it just launched. Um, and there's a guy that's doing it. Like he's paying his employees by the minute he's paying them. Like he just has their bank account set up and it's instantly setting up, sending his money. Um, so th that's something that, you know, if people were really curious about the, or maybe they're discouraged because it doesn't have that instantaneous payment, that stuff's coming. Um, you know, and it's just a matter of time. I mean, everybody's, going to start accepting bitcoin probably in five years i've already been paid in uh crypto for my first gig nice yeah uh may uh this weekend and uh it was great and uh i'm actually getting paid in a currency uh digital currency that has not come out yet they're gonna uh, give oh, it to me once uh, it comes you got conned again you got conned again Conned was again. It, was it Bitcoin like when was cash? the first time I got conned? Except for when I agreed to do this show. You just decided to take payment in a uh, a currency or a crypto coin that's not even on the market because I got a couple things I want to sell you. As long as you're you know buying any garbage, unless it's cat ass, I ain't buying anything from you. Okay, cat ass coin. <laughs> yeah, cat ass coin. Okay, yeah. <laughs> cat porn. Cat porn. I mean, have, you seen the, have you seen the doge coin the one with the dog yeah uh, why don't you make a why don't you make a, a cat one i've been thinking about making a coin we should make our own coin uh i would like a cat coin to be honest with you i think uh, the world needs that right now we need more cat coins we need what we need are moon cat uh, uh nfts um, I, they blew up over the weekend. I don't know if you guys saw the Cash Daddy's article that was posted on Twitter, but after the NFT explosion, people were literally looking for these digital cats. And like uh, one of our Discord readers said, I found one. And then he was like, I can't buy it because the gas fees are $2,000. But check it out if you can on our Twitter. There is a, uh, I, I, it's like a scavenger hunt right now to find these moon cats. So if Why did you throw trying, money, dude? Be like, I'll throw you money for this shit. That's what I was trying to say, but you interrupted me. So my point is, I'm putting a bounty out on these moon cats. If you can find one, please link it to the Twitter or the Discord because I'm super interested. And if I buy one, I might uh, be a willing to throw somebody a little bone. I pay good money for your cat coin. Good, good money. You come here, I give you money. I pay you in hummus, in hummus. Good money. That is the comedy you get on Cash Daddies. Corey, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we're sorry. Yeah, no problem. No, no, it was a, it was a blast, and I appreciate it. I'm glad too that uh, you know with the comedy world starting to, to heat up again. I'm I'm excited that people can actually go to a show. 
because uh, it's been uh, been a long, way too long. Where do you live, brother? Uh, Pittsburgh. All right, man. If we're out there, bam, come hang out. Get yeah, weird. Do you guys go to the improv, or do you? What do you hit up the, out here? Uh, we, we're slummers, dude. We prefer uh, adult bookstores to do our shows in. Iron okay. City Brewery, baby. Iron yeah, City, dude, I'll yeah. do it. We'll go there, man. I'll, I I prefer alternative rooms to those more corporate comedy clubs, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, there's not you many of them out. left. <laughs> why don't you guys come out? Because then we can, uh, shameless plug, mymoviesplus.com, um, the, the streaming platform that David and I are. Uh, what is it again? Uh, it's called My Movies Plus. Um, and the apps will be out in like June, but yeah, if you guys come out, that's, that's something I was talking to, uh, uh, Joe Bartnick about doing like a, we want to do like a unique stand up uh, like documentary and follow, like, like he said up in, was it in Seattle? Maybe that the, or maybe San Francisco, the best open mic place was like a laundromat, you know, or like something like that. And it's like, there's unique things like that all around the world. Like, we're all around the country. We want to check out, but yeah, maybe we could have the cash daddy's comedy special in some unique place in Pittsburgh, set it up with iron city beer so that they can provide the alcohol and um, sponsorship. And yeah, Done. let's do it. Let's do Done. it. Done. And, and just let's do it, baby. We Done. love Joe. Daddy's we, love, in. we love Joe Bartnick too. He's a hell we, of a, a Joe hell of Bartnick a is a friend and is yeah. a young Christian warrior. He's a good, yeah, he's, a, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. Um, so yeah, well, you guys just heard it here now. It's it's official. It's happening. Let's do this. We'll set it up. Oh snaps, man! We're in. We're in. I'm <laughs> excited. That, wait, is are you? Is that a catchphrase? You're just trying to slowly integrate to the show because I don't <laughs> like it at all. What is it? What? Oh what? snaps! When did you start doing that? There's been no approval for that. Uh, I've been going to marketing pop culture classes, and uh, this is what we do: repetitiveness, and uh-huh. it starts. It will be on a t-shirt someday okay, be, stop doing, you know stop doing it please well, our, our female listeners will be known as the snappers okay the snappers. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, sorry about that we'll do better next time we promise <laughs> no i appreciate it I'll, anytime guys Corey, Bye. what's your twitter so we can follow you God uh, yeah, damn. it's you can't, um, can't say goodbye to somebody. Can you? <laughs> you know what? You can say goodbye to them with a little respect to the guest, and that's what I choose to do. And you just choose to be you and say it's all about me, 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 me. Corey, what's your Twitter, please? Uh, it's at Bitcoin Simply. Sim- simply, Bitcoin Simply. Thank you. I, dude. I even write things down. Thank you. I don't you, just dude. ask. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. No catchphrases. Jesus. (laughs) Oh, snaps. Corey's out. Take care, Corey. (laughs) Have a great day. All right. See you guys. See you, Corey. See See you. Yeah. Good time. Okay, man. Thank you, Corey, for coming on. Here we are. This is everyone's favorite part of the show where we make our picks and hopefully no one will get their balls washed during this section because that would be unprofessional. But who knows? The show, anything goes. So, uh, Cat Lady, you want to go first? You want to have your picks? Sure, sure. As long as we just back up and realize that um, (laughs) through the ball working portion of the show, um, we forgot to work my balls. Oh, okay. You're yeah. violating the uh, 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 the rules of the show. This ball is working a, this protocol. Is, yeah, that's yeah. the earlier part of the show. We don't wash balls in this part of the show. But I guess if you just want to do your thing and just have no order and just be chaos, go have a good time. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but um, a couple weeks back, I bought a stock, um, Ebon. And... Um, like I told you before, if you ever have a chance to, to buy a stock called Bang and you don't do it, you deserve to get Bang. And on Friday, um, Ebon popped 35%. So congrats to all of the readers that jumped on the Bang wagon and bought Ebon because, you know, 35% spike, love it. Let Maybe- me ask you a question while you're talking yeah. about Ebon. Yeah. What price was it when you came out and pushed it? um seven dollars and 45 cents okay nice so when you pushed it a few weeks ago was it seven uh it was a week and a half i want to say a week and a half uh, hold on i pulled right here i'll tell you exactly when i bought it because i keep records um 
Oh, it's a little further back. I bought it on 0216. But again, uh, I do always put out my, my, my buys as soon as I buy them on Twitter. Sometimes they link to the Discord. Sometimes they don't. We're going to get uh, the art of getting up on that to make sure that that's a little tighter and a little seamless. I'm, the reason I'm off. asking you that is because mm-hmm. you pushed the stock to me and I went out and bought it. And you didn't wait. You dumped it, didn't you? No, oh, hold I on. Still, Paper I still hands it, dumped but, it. But, but, but when you told me to buy it, I, it was at like nine seventy, and that's when I bought it. I bought it at seven forty-five. Um, that's when I announced it. But hey, if you bought it at nine forty or nine seventy, nine seventy, I still own it. You're still a winner. Yeah, not as not as big of a winner as me, but you're still a winner. Yeah, nine seventy. I bought it. Okay. Yeah. So Ebon, huge, huge gain on Friday. Um, so right now I am currently 35% up on that trade. And then I just want to recognize the fact that I did jump in on the boomer wagon, jumped in on GE with you guys. A lot of people on the discord were saying, you know what? We got to get this boomer back in the game. Let's chase Howie's GE. Of course, we've got that eight to one reverse split. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but I did buy it after you, uh, told everybody to buy it and it dropped seven percent so i got yep. in after the dip after it took a shit after you told people to buy it so i feel good Back about up. that and then more importantly midweek last week acad um which is a pharmaceutical uh, company took a 50 percent drop the morning of march 9th and um they got some bad news on uh some fda scheduling of one of their uh their drugs and it dropped 50%. I know this company fairly well, and I felt it was a major, major overreaction. So what do I do? I say, readers, this is a major overreaction. This is clearly a dead cat opportunity. And I bought it. It popped 18% the next day. I sold half of it, still holding another half, um, you know, 50%. And I'm currently up 8% on it. So um, those are the, the that in- I mean, that's my ball working that I just didn't want to get glossed over. And to go on to my pick of the week, the readers did some amazing due diligence. And I am officially into sand. Mm -hmm. I bought sand. Sand. S-A-N-D. No, no, no. No. Sand. So what there is, is there is a, a sand shortage. Now, how can you say we can be out of sand? The world's what's the world like 70% water and like 20% sand. We've got a Sahara desert out there full of sand. No, this is particular. This sand is particular uses in fracking in glass. Um, little E, you might be able to jump in because I know you were doing some DD on it. And by the way, you know, you guys give me a lot of shit for making shout outs, but cat daddy on discord, this man is amazing at the due diligence that he's putting out and he's doing it for you guys. He makes it easy. You just go to the DD section um, on the Discord, and he's got these amazing links. Um, so I did a bunch of reading on the sand market, and I jumped into SLCA at $14.15 a share. Um, so that's my play. I'm going to be holding it long. There are two other plays in sand. If you want to go to the Discord, um, the guys will definitely walk you through those. But that's the only thing I bought in. Uh, there we go. We have that's our own good sand. Chart. Good chart. Yeah, we have our own sand. <laughs> <laughs> we have our own sand emoji now. Um, anyway, the guys are really big on sand. So I'm going to give full credit to the readers for getting me into sand. I do have um, uh, a crypto play I need to make, make known that I got into. Obviously, I jumped in on mana. Um, I bought at 117 and 112. Um, I think I'm down 50 bucks. I put a G into it. Um, and just so you know, people are like, how do I buy it? I used a MetaMask account. I transferred my Ethereum into MetaMask. And then I went to Uniswap. And then I realized I could have just gone to Uniswap. But again, I'm still learning how, uh, how these wallets work. So right now I have Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, MetaMask. And those are my three wallets that I'm using. And then lastly, if you'll recall, a week and a half ago, uh, my buddy Rob McKittrick, he bought Hoge and he said, guys, I, I 40, 46, my position. He called me last week and he goes, 
I sold too early. If I would have held, I would have 133 X my position. So what did I do? I got on MetaMask. I transferred my Ethereum in there and I went to Uniswap and I bought Hoge coin. That's H O G E. Evan, do you mind pulling up the chart real quick? Cause it's pretty impressive. So if you guys want a uh, crypto play and by the way, he gave me this because he said I was following a website called Crypto Moonshots. And look at that chart, man. If you just go to uh, go to the, there you go. So this is definitely what I would Dude, consider. I gotta, be, I gotta be honest with you, man. This yeah. MetaMask is a fucking crazy ass fucking app dude I, I if i am trying to understand it it's tricky now here's the it thing it is super tricky here's, and i think you can import other wallets into it <laughs> you can't so here's what you need to do if you want a metamask account you download it into your for me google chrome browser and then once you're in there you create the metamask account it'll give you a unique key which is 12 different words write those down put it in your vault copy it three times, do not lose that or else you can never get in. But then if you look at the upright portion of your browser, you'll see a puzzle piece. I wouldn't do it on your phone because I did it on my desktop and then later linked it to my phone. And I gotta do a lot of work here, man. Yeah, it's a little oh. tricky. Although Lil E's got it right there. Yep. So do you see the puzzle piece? That's it. That it, readers, if you're watching this, there is a puzzle piece app in the top right corner that is how you link the metamask because it's linked to your browser and then once you're in there that's when you transfer ethereum that's all what do you space. you use google chrome yeah what's going on you having heart palpitations yeah i'm dying okay because <laughs> you're, you're you're talking forever on here. i mean <laughs> well there's other you know people what? on the show this is wake, a wake what, me this up is, when he's done yeah jesus christ I don't even know how we, why you were even involved for the last 10 minutes because I know you're not going to get a MetaMask account because it's too confusing. My a point is fucking this. fucking MetaMask. Yeah, I'm my... going to get right on that as soon as we're okay. out of here. Here's I'm going to go thing, jack man. my dick, watch the next three games of the NCAA tournament finals. Okay, uh, Michael Hutchins. In, and I'm going to open up a MetaMask. Shout okay. out Patrick Ewing, the Georgetown Hoyas, winning the Big East. Yes. Yes. I like your boy. Yes. That guy should get his balls worked by Neff and his cats. The yeah, considering they wouldn't let him in Madison Square Garden. They didn't know who he was. I, I mean, okay. to fire everybody. Back to Neff talking, guys. Shut up. It's very important that I stress this point. Yeah, look at what? You're putting young Evan to sleep in his fucking no, Bruce no. Springsteen fucking hey, bandana. Easy. Here's here. born in the USA, Lily. <laughs> what I've come to realize is this. I need to be involved in crypto. I'm learning a lot, especially from the Discord. Now, crypto is maybe 3% of my total holdings. I plan on expanding that. I primarily own Bitcoin and Ethereum. But I listened to you, Sam, and I said, you know what? Bitcoin is the sun that, that all other altcoins revolve around. I want to get in that altcoin game. And I said, well, yeah. how do I do that? Well, you can't buy some of these crazy coins on Bitcoin or excuse uh, me, on Coinbase. Coin. Right, so you have to get out of your comfort zone and get into these other wallets where you can buy this stuff. Get into my belly. So that's it, I'm in Hoge. Um, my play is uh, SLCA in the stock market and um, I'm out. All right. I just yeah. dropped my vape pen, yo. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, I, I doubt it. I feel you're still got talking going on. Uh, Howie, would you like to go on? Yeah, I just forgot what I was going to say. Okay, uh, we'll come back <laughs> well, to here's it. what we got, man. <laughs> Listen, it's going to be a good week this week. It's going to be a good week. I think the market's going to continue to roll. Uh, definitely going to take some more profits because I think we'll get another correction, maybe the following week, end of the week. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm tell, I told everybody, just look. Well, they got nervous about the reverse split on General Electric. I said, buy more, just buy more. You're going to reduce the 8.8 .8 billion shares out there. And it, it popped back up. It's headed back up. But listen, this is a stock for the week. I got a stock right now. The stock's trading, I think, 1350, 1360. I'm looking at July and August, 14 calls on it. I think this is a great play. The stock is called Ford, symbol F. 
And this isn't just me. This is a couple guys on the Discord. They're doing the same thing. The stock is totally breaking out. If you look at it, the Ford chart. as in cars. Ford as in cars. The All stock, right, dude. The stock has gone from like twelve to fourteen in the past month, two months. If you look at that chart, that's a one month chart, and I think you're going to see that thing at fourteen, fifteen dollars extremely soon. It looks like it's breaking out, which means it's going to jump up a couple points quickly. If you buy some July or August uh, 14 calls on it and it does do that, you'll be up 50, 60 percent. That's all I got, baby. Love it, dude. I love your boomer stocks and I'm in. I buy a lot of your boomer suggestions because yeah, I myself sell, am a boomer. You, yeah. And then you sell the ones that I give to you after you listen to his boomer suggestions and lose out on fat. Game. Yeah. I mean, like how he's my friend and, you know, to heirs to human. What am I? To, what am I? You are my friend too. And I take your advice, take your advice, I take Evan's advice. And how he said sell and I sold. And <laughs> now he's sending me $2,000. It's okay. Yep. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, guys, as you know. One- Oh, you're not what, what show, did, right? are, are, are you are you going to keep talking? Is that is that what I have, it is? I just want to make sure you know that I have one reader shout out. So don't don't jam. Don't jam. Hey, you want me to do it now or do you no, want to do a monologue do and I then would, jam? I would love I would love because once you get going, we have 10 more minutes of podcasting going. I'll do my, I'll do my I have a pick. Oh, OK, you please go, Evan. CLSN. OK. CLSN, show it to us. CLSN. All right. Okay. How much is it trading at? It's trading at uh, 222. But so uh, what's the market cap on it, Louie? Oh, Jesus. Oh, is this a digital currency or a stock? It's a stock. Um, the market cap is 162 million. Okay. Um, and they're on the FDA fast track for a treatment that treats ovarian cancer. Um, apparently revolutionary so that's going to be in like a week a week and a half maybe two weeks and they have a business meeting on friday the 19th um so a lot of people are anticipating that so and you're what, saying this this thing helps the lady readers is that what you're saying yes a treatment for very cancer i'm in anything for the lady readers all oh, for them the ladies. and lil e can you give us an update on ocgn because i know a lot of people follow you on that stock yeah, um, OCGN had one hell of a Thursday. I think that was up, what, 30%, 40% on Thursday. Um, it hasn't gone back down. It's at $10 right at the moment. Um, but that was just after a little bit of news of, you know, not even anything that big. Uh, still waiting on FDA approval. Uh, but they're in Africa, Brazil, and Mexico, I believe, at the moment. So big news coming. And that's a stock that's 40% shorted by the hedge funds. 52. 52% shorted would mean everybody should be buying that stock to stick it right to the hedge funds' asses right now. After you Everyone do, Everyone should be buying that thing. After you do your due diligence. You don't need to do shit. Just buy like the shit stop. out of it. <laughs> buy the shit out of it. Can right. I go ahead and get this shout out in? Uh, have I talked yet? Have I talked yet? <laughs> Have I talked yet? <laughs> okay. So it's very important that everybody understands that the readers make this show. And okay. Here are my picks. All right. Here are my <laughs> picks. So all you right. want me to do this afterwards? After yeah, of text? course I okay, would, okay, because okay, it's okay, called okay. a flow of the show, dude. <laughs> all right. Oh. Flow, just simmer down. Get your flow Jesus, out. I'm out here trying this fucking. Hustle to... and flow, bro. Gee, okay. Get it go. All right. Here we go. So uh, obviously everybody knows I like mana. I still like mana. I don't see mana. I it could dip down. It, hey, it could go down 70 cents. I don't know. This is a thing that it, as time goes on and you start seeing more and more of this virtual stuff, this is a stock, or excuse me, a cryptocurrency that will only grow. It will only grow. So I'm staying with mana. Obviously, uh v chain bet i talked to you about that okay one that i really like right now and i bought it the other day uh and i bought a big chunk of it okay a big chunk of it 
is uh, obviously I like um, Harmony right now. I got Harmony. I bought it. I bought a, um, a, a section of it for basically 1100 and I'm already up not almost 800 bucks. Seven, oh, seven so thanks for not sharing that with us. Yeah, what the fuck? Like it's literally, kind of am I doing that right now? I mean, is that no, 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 what no. I'm doing you, right no, now? No, 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 you're not doing it right now because you already I am bought doing it. it right now. Not, no, you bought it and you're up $900. Yeah. So when did you buy it? Uh... <laughs> When did, you, when did you buy I'm not, it? I'm not up a uh, 900. I'm up $730. Okay. So when did you buy it? Uh, a couple days ago. Okay. So let me under, let me explain to you how this works. <laughs> when you buy something and it's not uh, during the show week pick, you go to Cash Daddy's Twitter. Do you have the login? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. And then do you know how to tag yourself and pretend that you're posting it and it's Sam Tripoli recommends a buy on Harmony. You do okay. that, and okay. then the, the readers get to enjoy okay. the fruits of your win. Okay. So can we can we get you in the process of doing that? That will, for now on, be what I do. Okay, thank you. So God. should we still buy Harmony after you just gain 70%? Hey, dude, it's up 33%. I like it. It's got, you know, I like it a lot. Now, for me, I like man, it a lot. A lot, a lot. So another one I really like, and it's kind of funny, is that I didn't realize I'd bought it before. Uh, now it was up to 42 cents. It's down to 30 cents, okay? 30 cents. If you got some money, buy a big chunk of this, because if you go to Coinbase, it will tell you District Ox. Why do I like, also like it? D, it's it's District Ox. It is the year of the ox. Okay, that's some Chinese shit right there. All right. And Normally, you know I would say that that is the dumbest shit I've ever heard, but I do believe in that stuff. And people do buy things based on Chinese New Year's. So okay. I'm in. So this is what the, the description of District Ox is right now. Okay. District Ox is an Ethereum token that has powered a network of decentralized marketplaces and communities called districts. The token is required for application to the district registry and is used to signal support or disapproval for proposals made by the network participants. That is huge. So I didn't again, understand a word of what you so said. So basically me... what's going on to these... Neff, if I can explain... No, I know you've had a lot it's of not coffee. about explaining. It's about enunciating. It's not a race to get the words out of your mouth. Okay. Now you're now you're you're questioning my reading to the readers. Is that what you're doing? You're questioning my reading this to the readers. You into just a fifth grade uh, fucking English you, class. You just made one long word in three minutes of talking. No, you literally were talking over me, so they couldn't hear it. No, that's basically roll the what tape. this coin roll the tape is. Back. That is not true. What this coin is, is that it is used as uh, entry into different digital marketplaces. Okay. You have to have this currency to participate in these marketplaces. Okay. See how much okay. better that is when you just slow down? I'm annoyed by talking like this. So the slow people like you, okay, on the short bus that's going to Cash Daddy land, okay, have to understand what I'm talking about. It's not about that. We can understand you now. Okay. okay. My point is this coin, it has a practical use in the marketplace. And it's 30 cents. And it's 30 cents. What right. am I saying to you? If you have money, buy it and sit on it. Very well done. Yeah. Very well done. I could understand everything. Those are my choices. Okay. All right. Do you want I'm to drop? You want to in. drop the mic or anything? No, I don't. Okay. I don't know this if we should keep doing more. This is the longest show in the history of I don't, our time. I don't do know. Do a shout out. Do the goddamn okay. shout, shout out. out. Everybody wants to get All on right. with their do lives. Do the fucking shout yeah, out. I All know right. that the only time you talk to pe human <coughs> beings is when you're on the show. I get it. Okay. So let's okay. go. This week's shout out comes from Stacy Loomis. Now, Stacy, do you know Stacy? Very, very cool person. She was looking at adopting Millicent, but she couldn't adopt Millicent, my rescue because her landlord wouldn't have a cat. So full disclosure, I do have a relationship with her. So we're cat trafficking on the show now. We're cat trafficking. <laughs> Stacy wrote this. 
Hey, just wanted to say kudos. Your podcast is really funny. I listened to the GameStop episode and it was way out of my league of fiscal understanding. I figured that maybe I should stay in my own lane. However, I've been a Jimmy Wisman fan for a bit. So I listened to episode 14, super funny and accessible, even for the fiscally impaired like myself. Y'all have inspired me. I'll be opening an account and hanging out with Chucky Schwab any day now. Seriously though, Roblox. My youngest loves it and that shit, fully going to try it. Speaking of children, Sam really can't leave the cat man shit alone, can he? I think it's fantastic that you have cats. You've proven to be a role model for my son. He's 10 years old. His dad teases him mercilessly for having a pet cat. You and Ernest Hemingway show him that real manly men can own cats. Papa Hemingway, guns. I'm not done. Papa Hemingway doesn't have a real internet presence. So you're more relevant here. Thanks for being a role model and glad that your podcast is awesome. Was that Thank your burner you. account? Yeah. Oh. Why are you writing emails to yourself? <laughs> Ernest Hemingway was a pussy. <laughs> yeah, literally. The point is, I love it when I hear readers saying, you just got me into the market and I'm not afraid anymore. That's very cool. Um, and I love it even more when people realize that just because you own cats, that doesn't make you any less manly than a guy who owns a dog. Okay. Okay. We need to break the stigma okay. of guys not being men because they own cats. Wrap it Thomas. up. Okay. The you Thomas. literally took this marathon comedy <laughs> podcast and did five minutes on the importance of cats. Guys, this is uh Cash Daddies. Uh please uh invest wisely, do your own research. Uh, and, and, you know, stay away from cats. They make you do dangerous shit. Guys, By the way, thank- last shout out. Thank you. to This is for you, Sam. Bye. I just want to say, th- <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say thanks, <laughs> thanks to Sam actually showing up to the show. Okay. Because I don't know if you guys noticed, but his attendance is spotty around here. All right. And we care oh. about the show and we are committed to the show. And that is very important. Have a great week, readers. Cash Daddies.